Welcome all to this tutorial. Today I will start talking about LUX or Linux Unified Key System. Let me just show you how it is spelled in a moment as the system is in the, I'm in the process of logging into the system. So let's go ahead and open the terminal. It's LUX. So Linux Unified Key System. What is this? Well, as I said, I intend to talk about encryption and this is a way in which you can actually encrypt your drives. That adds an extra layer of security ensuring that you and you alone have access to those files when you lock them up. Only a person with a key or you would have access to them. Without the key, it would be gibberish. You would not be able to you would not be able to make heads or tails out of it. This is good for a wide variety of scenarios, not only for the encryption of massive storage disks, but rather instead you can also encrypt your USB drives. So if you're using if you have sensitive information on your USB drives and you're carrying them around, it probably is a good idea to encrypt them as because when they are encrypted they won't be I mean if you lose them, whoever whoever comes to be in the possession of them will not be able to access your information at all. Uh, they will only be able to see gibber gibberish with whatever program that they're using, even if that, but they will not be able to read through the information because it is encrypted completely. So that can be a very strong and very good layer of security for your disks. For example, if this gets stolen or something of a kind, you can protect against unauthorized access. And police have had a lot of problems with this, primarily with the encryption, because a lot of criminals unfortunately know how to use it. And what they did what they do is basically just encrypt the drives so the drives can no longer be used as evidence I mean technically they can but what are you gonna use them for when you do not have access to any information there now the reason why I'm citing this example is that police of course hires external external help so they hire company they pay companies to break the encryption and in some cases some types of encryption uh, they can manage to break. For example, if they if you have a encryption backup with Dell or something of a kind, then Dell can be contacted to unlock it or something like that. But and for Toshiba, I think it's the same. And for most of these large manu disk manufacturers, uh, if you use their encryption system or if you have a backup at their place, then if you have a backup, that's mainly that's the main thing for the encryption then they can actually unlock it. But if you're using something like Lux or something of a kind on a regular disk, well, I'm afraid that's just not going to happen. And the companies that do this, they have huge systems where they can generate a large amount of keys in a relatively short amount of time. But I've seen encryption keys over 20, 30 characters long. and no matter what sort of a machine you have, I mean, with 40 characters, if you had 40 characters, all the machines of this world wouldn't help you. That That's how many combinations you could actually make. So, uh, it is vital that the encryption keys are strong. I think that when you install it, perhaps not in Red Hat, but if you install Ubuntu, there is a wise message that says, if the encryption key is longer than 20, that should be safe enough as it would literally take an eternity to guess it. Now I imagine if you uh, multiply that by 2 and had 40, the amount of keys does, is, is not doubled, it actually grows exponentially, meaning it quite literally explodes. Anyway, sometimes they manage to break the encryption if the encryption keys are weak and the police manages to catch the bad... well, the prosecution manages to uh, push the case and jail the bad guys, but most of the time, if everything is set up right, they won't be able to do it. Uh, there are disks. I do believe that this is that this law is valid in the U.S., but I'm not sure for the rest of the world, where they are allowed to keep the disks for like 10 years if they're encrypted or something like that. But it doesn't really help that much because the case is not going to drag on for 10 years, 
and you are not going to devote that many resources for 10 years to actually unencrypt it. But okay, maybe they have some other methods. Uh, there must, there probably is a reason for it. Anyway, I just want to make a short uh, intro and demonstration as to what encryption is and how you can, how it can be used, various scenarios, and how secure it is. It is very secure as long as you and only you know the encryption key. If you're typing in your encryption key in a public place or something of a kind, that can be a very bad idea for you. Anyway, let's go ahead and make some preparations for Lux because we're going to need to do a few things here. One of the first things that we will need to do is create a new hard drive. Well, add a new hard drive to this virtual machine. So let's go ahead and close it. Well, I can actually just power it off the regular way. Click here, power off. Power off. I could have shut it off to, through the terminal. I think I showed you that once. Just type in power off and it goes down like no man's business. Okay, so while this is happening, I have my recorder there. Doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and expand this. And where is it? Where is it? Down here. Okay, so Red Hat, we go into settings, and as before, we go into storage, click on controller, SATA, click on uh, add hard disk create new hard disk next next we will name this one Lux as that is its purpose I will just leave it at 8 gigabytes because we will seriously not need more I could probably even put it in, in megabytes as well but it doesn't really matter go ahead and click on create and there you go this is going to be our third hard drive that we will add to our virtual machine Go ahead and click on OK here, and then open up your Red Hat. We will need to do a few things with this with this drive before we actually get into the crypto set into the crypto setup. It's actually crypt setup. Uh, I don't know. Most people just pronounce it crypto setup. When you type in the command, it's crypt setup not a big deal I'll show you I'll show you how it works uh, it's a fairly simple command uh, it's used for Lux and it has a lot of arguments that you can pass to it which is fantastic but usually any command that you issue with crypto setup it's not very long so you don't need to have you don't need to immediately know all the details you can just go one by one by one by one and eventually you are going to get it so this machine is booting. It's going to boot soon enough. Virtual machine's kind of slow. It's getting on my nerves. But what can you really do about it? I think my that my physical mach my physical machine is a lot faster than this. Test. Yep. There we go. So test and come on, boot, 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 please. I am waiting. Would you be so kind? Yes, you would be very kind and to oblige me. And it would work. We'll just go ahead and get rid of that message for VirtualBox guest editions. I know that they're not working to the fullest of extents, but the idea is this uh, full screen, full screen window. So click, go ahead and click on terminal. Let's go ahead and type in f disk dash l. Oops, yeah, we need to become root this dash L and do we have what we are looking for uh, where is it where is it where is it where is it attach root SDB one two three SDA and there we go so the first one is actually SDC we will leave it as it is no need to really do anything with it now Let's just go ahead and play around with the whole disk because I really haven't created anything on it. As you can see, I just created the disk itself. Oh, by the way, you can actually press Control L to clear the screen as well, apparently. I prefer to use clear. It's kind of difficult to press Control and L with the same hand. They're quite far apart, but yeah. 
just a bit of extra info, that's all. If you use two hands, then it will be fine, yeah. So, uh, we will need to create our volume group, another one. So disregard those things that we've done thus far. Don't touch, uh, you can touch them if you wish. Feel free to do whatever you want with them. But we are going to create a new volume group. Now keep in mind, all of these disks that I have created in all of their partitions, I have done it in gigabytes because I have plenty of spare space here. But if you don't, feel free to do it in megabytes. I'm pretty sure that you have a couple of megabytes spare space on a drive. If you don't, well, uh, you need to think about that drive because it's not good to actually run out of space like that. Anyway, uh, go ahead and type in uh, VG create and then we're gonna name it Lux group. After that we will say dev sdc physical volume dev sdc successfully created volume group looks group successfully created good now let's go ahead and do lv create so lv create n and we shall name this lux uh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and do this. So, LV Lux Logical Volume Lux seems uh, seems like an okay name. And then we're gonna need to define the size. Notice that I am using a bit of a different order here. It doesn't really matter. It'll be fine. Some things you can shift around. So dash L and the size. I don't know. I've said eight gigs. I think we can add seven. It doesn't. The size is completely irrelevant here. I, I literally couldn't care less about the size. As I said, it can be anything. I am going to delete these drives anyway, so it doesn't matter. And probably you will too. So they're just for playing around. Feel free to assign anything that you physically can, and that's it. And we will go ahead and add the group, which will be Lux Group. That's it. Press enter. Logical volume. Uh, LV Lux created. If we do LVS, oops, let's just go ahead and expand this. Clear. LVS. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. There we go. So LV Lux volume group Lux group. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and clear screen. VGS. It says a Lux group has one physical volume, has one logical volume. Excellent. So all is well, all is fine, all is dandy. We didn't have any partitions here or anything like that. I've just taken the whole disk and I will play around with it and then I will create some things and do some things with it and so on and so forth. Anyway, in the next tutorial, we will go to Crypt Setup and we'll see how the process of encryption actually works and what else do you need to do, what do you need to do in order to encrypt your uh, drives and have your files stored in a secure fashion so you can sleep better at night. Anyway, I would like to bid you all farewell and I sincerely hope to see you in the follow-up tutorial.